Okay, so in this video, we will consider our first example of evaluating the arc length of a function over a given interval. So we want to find the arc length of this curve over the interval x going from 0 to 1. Well, here's the formula for the arc length of a given curve from a to b for the function f of x that we derived in our previous video. But I want to mention before we go ahead a word of caution. If I take a random curve and I try and find its arc length, almost always it is impossible to find the arc length exactly because the integral you will obtain will be impossible to evaluate exactly. So all the examples you will encounter in this course are essentially cooked up so that it is possible to evaluate the integral exactly. Which means if you make a mistake in the derivative, odds are you'll have an impossible integral. So be very careful that when you want the arc length of a curve and you want the exact length, everything depends on getting the derivative right. So differentiate the function very carefully. So if things get really nasty when you try to integrate, odds are, or at least very likely, you've made a mistake in finding your derivative. All right, so let's find our derivative. So f prime of x, of course, if you want, is just dy over dx. So let's differentiate. One third is a constant multiple, so it stays there, times the derivative of this expression. We have a composition. We first square x, add 2, then take the power of 3 halves. So by the chain rule, we differentiate the outside function, the power of 3 halves. So by the power rule, we bring the exponent down and subtract 1 from it. 3 half minus 1 is 1 half, of course. And we evaluate at the same argument, x squared plus 2. But that's not it. This term came from differentiating the power of 3 half. There is still a leftover of x squared plus 2. By the chain rule, we have to multiply our expression by the derivative of the leftover function. The derivative of two x squared plus 2, of course, is 2x. And now this is the derivative. Of course, before we plug it in, we'll simplify. Always simplify the 1 plus the derivative squared. Once it is fully simplified, then and only then, plug into the integral and try to evaluate. So we have 3 over 3 cancels, 2 over 2 cancels. So all we're left with is, I'll put the x term first, and the power of 1 half, of course, is just a square root. x squared plus 2. Well, what we want is the derivative squared, so let's square both sides. So f prime of x squared. Well, if you square x, you get x squared. Times, if you square a square root, the square root goes away, and you're left with x squared plus 2. If you multiply, you'll have x to the 4 plus 2x squared. And finally, we want 1 plus f prime squared. So 1 plus our derivative squared. We simply are adding 1 to both sides, so we'll get x to the 4 plus 2x squared plus 1. So now that we have calculated 1 plus the derivative squared, and it's fully simplified, then we can plug in and try to evaluate the arc length of our curve. So our arc length would be the integral. A and B are the endpoints of our interval, so the interval here goes from 0 to 1, so A equals 0, B equals 1. Square root of 1 plus our derivative squared which is x to the 4 plus 2x squared plus 1. Sorry, let me just rewrite it. dx. And now we have to evaluate this integral. The square root of x to the 4 plus 2x squared plus 1. And this may look like a pretty nasty integral. How can we find the integral of the square root of a quartic polynomial? So it may look a little daunting. But if you look at this a little closer, x to the 4 plus 2x squared plus 1, this actually is a perfect square. 
x to the 4 plus 2x plus 1 is simply x squared plus 1 squared. If you square this, x squared times itself x to the 4 plus x squared plus x squared 2x squared plus 1 times 1, 1. So it's actually a perfect square. So the square root will simply cancel out. We have the root of a perfect square. Now here's a word of caution though. When you have the root of something squared, it really is the absolute value of the expression. But as our expression here is x squared plus 1, and it's always positive, we don't need the absolute value. So we're left with simply x squared plus 1, dx, which is a polynomial, and now we can evaluate using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we find our antiderivative by the power rule, very easy, x cubed over 3 plus x, and we must evaluate from 0 to 1. So if you write that 1 here, we get 1 third plus 1, minus the function at the lower bound of integration, but replacing x by 0, of course, gives us 0. So all we're left is a third plus 1, which is 4 thirds. And that's it. So if you were to sketch the graph of this function on the interval from 0 to 1 and ask how long is the curve uh, in the picture, in your graph, the answer is exactly 4 over 3, and that's it.